1633. Pax Christi. Praised be God. Although for us, there is little peace in this land now. I never knew Japan when it was a country of light, but I have never known it to be as dark as it is now. All our progress has ended in new persecution, new repression, new suffering. The following is an interview with the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, shot February 6, 2024, at about 7 p.m. in the building behind us, which is, of course, the Kremlin. I never asked them to build this. They just assumed the white man required a chapel and put it by the dungeon. We're not France. On the 6th of February, 1778, France and the United States signed the first two treaties ever negotiated by the American government and which formally recognized the independence of the United States. Good morning, my friends. Today is Tuesday, February 6th. It's Tuesday of the fifth week in Ordinary Time. It's the memorial of St. Paul Miki and Companions. St. Paul Miki and his companions were martyred on February 5th, 1597 in Japan. He was a Japanese Jesuit. I believe there's something I can do for you. They've been godless here as long as they've been. You saw what they did to your priests and faithful, kicked out and crucified the word dead. The 26 men and women we honor today, the first martyrs of the Far East, remind us yet again of the price followers of Jesus have paid throughout history. Jesuit brother Paul Miki, a native of Japan, has become the best known among the martyrs who died in 1597 during a period of harsh persecution of Christians. Lucky for you, their man in charge is greedy. I plan to cut that shogun's head from his shoulders and reimagine this nation more to my liking. Paul Miki continued to preach Christianity in his final hours. While hanging upon a cross placed on a hill overlooking Nagasaki, he forgave his persecutors. Following the crucifixions of Paul Miki and his companions, some missionary work continued. Finally, Christians were forced to go underground until the 1860s when Japan was reopened to the outside world. Upon their return, the missionaries found little trace of Christianity except around Nagasaki, where local Christians had secretly preserved the faith. The martyrs of Japan were canonized in 1862. But I'll tell you this though, if this all goes my way, I will go ahead and take it for a sign that you tilted the wind to my back. And I will, in kind, build into my new station a pulpit. 30 years ago, on 5 February 1991, Father Arupe's profound desire to be with his Lord forever was fulfilled. Father Arupe continues to be a source of inspiration for members of the Society of Jesus, for our partners in mission, for the brother Ignatian family, for religious life, and for the Church. From of his encounter with Christ, who became the center and sense of his life, Father Arupe burned with missionary ardor, set alight by the spark of the Gospel. We remember Father Arupe as we prepare to enter into the Ignatian year during which we too want to see all things new in Christ. I will send for your priests to bring them your word and hand you a nation of souls. During this year, inspired by the profound process of conversion that began with the bounding of Ignatius of Loyola in the Battle of Pamplona, we too desire to make Jesus the center and sense of our life in such a way that we bear witness to the gospel with renewed vigor in a world convulsed by the pandemic of the coronavirus and wounded by social inequality, by the poverty of so many, 
my obstacles put in the paths of migrants who dream of a better life and by the weakness of political systems with little respect for the will of the people. We are living without doubt a profound cultural change. We are challenged to bring the light of the gospel to this process of change, to help to make it more human in the style of Jesus, the model of full humanity. My thanks, if you see fit. Sharing the missionary spirit of Father Arrupe and guided by the universal apostolic preferences, let us make this 30th anniversary of his passing a new opportunity to dream together of a better future. Let us renew our commitment to transform our life through the encounter with Christ, from whom we can receive the Spirit to awaken the creativity we need to make those dreams become real. We count on the intercession of the servant of God, Pedro Arrupe, and Our Lady of the Way to accompany us in preparing the new path of the Lord. I was in my room with another priest at 8.15 when suddenly we saw a blinding light, like a flash of magnesium. Naturally, we were surprised and jumped up to see what was happening. As I opened the door which faced the city, we heard a formidable explosion, similar to the blast of a hurricane. At the same time, doors, windows, and walls fell upon us in smithereens. We were thrown to the floor. I shall never forget my first sight of what was the result of the atomic bomb. A group of young women, 18 or 20 years old, clinging to one another as they dragged themselves along the road. We did the only thing that could be done in the presence of such mass slaughter. We fell on our knees and prayed for guidance as we were destitute of all human help. It's no matter to me either way. I've got uh, no use for souls.